Okay, uh, this lesson uh, covers cause and effect fallacies. Cause and effect fallacies, uh, again, have to do with the information that we covered in the prior section where we learned about cause and effect reasoning. These are the fallacies and the mistakes in reasoning that occur when we reason about cause and effect. So uh, here we go. Uh, consider this example. After I took Zycam, my cold went away fast. So, or therefore, taking Zycam caused my gold to go, my my gold to go away. That too caused my cold to go away. Um, how do we know that? This is a, an example of a cause and effect fallacy. Um, when we reason in this way, we're making a mistake. What kind of a mistake are we making? Well, it has a Latin name. Okay, so we're gonna go Harry Potter here. Um, and and we'll, we'll give everything a Latin name. Um, the name for it, here's how you say this, post hoc ergo propter hoc. Okay? Um, post hoc literally means after that, post, after, hoc means that, ergo means therefore, propter means because of or because, and hoc again means that. So literally this translates after that, therefore, because of that. In cause and effect reasoning, uh, and I've articulated this on our lesson on cause and effect reasoning generally, um, the way that we know or the way that we suspect that one thing causes another is that we see each event or each thing happening either simultaneously or one after the other. Um, right? You see somebody strike a match along a book and then you see a book of matches and then you see the match light and you're um, seeing of the match move along the side and then your seeing of the match lit leads you to conclude that striking the match uh, along the side of the matchbook causes uh, the match to light. Um, but just because one thing comes after another thing doesn't mean that it uh, was the cause or even the effect. Um, that's a mistake that we call post hoc ergo propter hoc. From the prior example, just because you took Zycam and then after that your cold went away, that by itself doesn't mean that Zycam caused your cold to go away. In order to know that, we have to conduct a scientific study um, of the order that we studied in cause and effect reasoning to know that that cause and effect relationship has uh, is actually there. So post hoc uh, reasoning, that's what we call it for short, um, um, is really just assuming the fact that one event came after another establishes that it was caused by it. Okay, now here's an example. After I played poker, my cold went away fast. So playing poker caused my cold to go away fast. Now you will immediately recognize that this is a bad, bad reasoning, right? But notice that the form of the reasoning is just like the Zycam. Now Zycam is purported to make your cold go away faster. Um, um, or to make your cold go away, and um, that's what it's supposed to do. But essentially, how do we know whether it did it or not? Well, it's not enough to note that your cold went away after you took Zycam. That's not enough, because your cold went away after you did a lot of things, and we don't assume that everything that came after you or came before your cold going away caused your cold to go away. Okay. Here's another example. John had a heart attack while he was saying a prayer. Therefore, the prayer caused the heart attack. Um, no, uh, not not good reasoning at all. But this one, this example will be a little bit different. This is not post hoc ergo propter hoc. In other words, it's not this happened after that. Notice that John's heart attack happened at the same time he was saying his prayer. So we have a different name for this. This is called cum hoc ergo propter hoc or with that therefore because of that. So cum means with. Cum hoc ergo propter hoc is with that therefore because of that. And the idea here is that just because two things happen at the same time, it doesn't mean that one caused the other. Or assuming the fact that one event happened around the same time as the other uh, does not establish that uh, the one caused the other, or that the other caused the one, as a matter of fact. Okay? Um, just because two things go together doesn't mean that one caused the other. That by itself is insufficient to know that.
Okay. Uh, so there's the example. Apparently, at my uh, the contents of my slides are a little bit out of order. Um, consider this one. Every day the sun comes up right after the rooster crows. Therefore, the rooster causes the sun to come up. Now, do you think that a rooster's crowing causes the sun to come up? The answer is clearly no. But notice that the same form of reasoning is happening here, and that is that one thing came after another, so they're assuming on the basis of that alone that one caused the other. Again, the succession of things, the succession of things, that things happen in a certain order, the order of things doesn't prove causal relationship. Or another way of stating that same idea is that correlation to things going together does not prove causation. Just because two things go together does not mean that one causes the other. Um, this, what we have here with the rooster, is a case of post hoc after that reasoning. The rooster crows, after that the sun comes up. Well, that doesn't mean that just because the two correlate that way doesn't mean that one causes the other. Um, even the fact uh, that one event invariably follows another still doesn't prove that the first caused the second. Even if that rooster crows, even if roosters crow every time before the sun comes up, that doesn't prove that the first caused the second. They very well could be related accidentally. All right, let's try another example. Um, this will be a different sort of fallacy. Uh, we'll put a name to it in just a second. After a terrible evening with mosquitoes, you wear a copper mosquito be gone bracelet. The mosquitoes didn't seem so bad after that. You conclude that the bracelet works. If the average value of a variable is atypical on one measurement, it is likely to be less typical on the subsequent <laughs> measurement. Here's what we're saying. This is an instance of what we call overlooking regression. In other words, um, the number of mosquitoes that attack you on a particular night will vary. You won't get the same number every night. Why? Because nights vary. Mosquitoes are less common when the wind is blowing. Um, why? They're little buggy creatures that can't really fly very well in the wind. Um, and so they typically, you, you won't notice as many of them. But if the air is stale and it's not moving, or you're in a swampy area um, where the air is moving, you're going to get a, a lot of mosquitoes, right? Okay, so just because the average number of mosquito bites varies, you can't conclude. So I do this thing and the number goes down. Sometimes you should expect the number to go down for reasons not having to do with that causal mechanism. Um, let me give you another example of overlooking regression. Okay. Um, here's another example, and sometimes it's referred to as the SI jinx or the Sports Illustrated jinx. With the Sports Illustrated jinx, what happens is um, according to this jinx, if you make the cover of Sports Illustrated, then you're going to be cursed and your athletic performance or your sports performance will fall off subsequent to that. You will perform below your peak. Now, where did this curse come from? Well, it's just something that we notice a lot that people who are on the cover of Sports Illustrated next time aren't doing so hot. Um, after that, they don't do as well as they had been doing. But why is that? Well, consider an example, right? Um, my son plays lacrosse, and he is a goalie, and I keep all of his goalie statistics, uh, the, number, the percentage of shots against him that he's able to save every game. Now, his save percentage varies from game to game and he has a certain range that he's in. Now he has an overall average across all of his games, but not every game is exactly that average number. He has some above and some below. Now because his number is an average, let's say that his average save percentage is 60%, which is pretty good for a goalie. Um, if his average save percentage is 60% and he has a game where he gets 80% saves, 
what should I expect in the following um, games? Probably something a bit below that. Why? Well, because he's going to regress to the norm. He's going to regress to what the average is, okay? And so I should expect to be lower. Now, if someone makes the cover of Sports Illustrated, they've made that cover because they're performing exceptionally well. Well, if someone is performing exceptionally well um, above their average, then what should we expect? A return to their average. They should regress uh, largely because the, the, the performance now is above average, and so we expect them to regress to the average. Um, so a lot of times we can reason um, that there's a causal relationship, but what we're really doing is missing the fact that there's a regression to the norm. And this happens a lot with people who think that there is, for example, a Sports Illustrated jinx, that once you get on the cover, you immediately do worse. What happens is that the players regress to their norm, um, and so their play definitely falls off. Okay. All right, uh, so that was our example. Um, another example here, or another um, causal problem here, as illustrated in this example. Um, in our tests, we randomly selected men to drive golf balls as far as they could. Okay, so um, we've got guys. We're going to take them to a golf range, and we're going to tell them, okay, shoot these, you know, hit these balls as far as you can. Here's here's your one wood, go for it. And so they're hitting balls as far as they can. And you do a first round, and then you you average out um, for the group um, the length of their drive. Okay, how far they were able to get the ball out there. Then you do round two, same number of balls, same group of men. This time you have them wear a magnetic bracelet and try it all over again. Um, on the second occasion, let's assume that the men hit the ball on average 10 feet further, that the average distance the ball went out was 10 feet further the second time around. And they had the bracelet on, so we're going to conclude then that the bracelet causes you to drive the ball better. Um, no, and why not? Well, because when we um, do samples like that where we're driving a golf ball, our sets of samples are going to vary from instance to instance. Um, one time I'll average such and such a distance, the next time I'll average a little bit shorter than that, the next time I'll average a little bit longer than that. What's happening here is that um, in this mistaken reasoning, this is a variety of post hoc reasoning, what we're doing is we're overlooking the random variation of a sample. Um, we looked at this when we looked at the table um, in our chapter on, in our section, our lessons on cause and effect reasoning, when we looked at that table and it looked at um, margins of error and these sorts of things, um, um, or expected variation um, in these sorts of things, um, what we're saying is we expect our samples to be within a certain range, within a margin of error or within a certain range. And um, so the fact, sometimes what's happening is that people are overlooking the natural fact of variation that particularly how far we hit golf balls won't be the same every time. Okay, um, So there we go. That's our example. Um, okay, here's another example. Um, this is a little bit different problem here. In this one, we're overlooking something else. People who walk long distances enjoy good health. Therefore, walking long distances will make you healthy. Here, they are assuming that walking long distances causes good health. Um, but there might be something else going on here. They might have confused. Their assumption is that A is causing B, but maybe B is causing A. In other words, maybe people who enjoy good health are just more prone to go on longer walks. So maybe good health is uh, more causally related to, um, to long walks. Um, give you another example of this sort of thing. A lot of times, uh, for a very long time, we have thought that um, it, what we know is that students who sit in the front of a class typically do better in that class when you have an in-class environment. Well, um, typically the thought has been that sitting in the front causes students to do better. But actually, um, 
we don't know if that's the case. Maybe it's that the better students tend to sit towards the front and the not so good students just tend to sit towards the back. Well, which one is it? Well, it's a great question. And for a very long time, we had assumed that um, the fact is just that the better students sit up front. So being a good student causes you to sit up front. Some studies have recently found that it's actually the other way around, that sitting up front causes you to be a good student. Um, so does A cause B or does B cause A? Well, when we confuse the order about what caused what, what we have here is uh, reverse causation. And so um, uh, one variety of the with that, therefore because of that, is, the, is overlooking reverse causation or the fact that it could be the other way around is basically what we're saying. So that was our example there. All right, um, here's an example of overlooking coincidence. Sometimes it's just a coincidence. Sometimes things, two things go together, but they have nothing to do with one another, like the rooster crowing and the sun coming up. Um, actually, that's not true. I think the sun coming up causes the rooster to crow, not the other way around. But here's an example where um, two things go together, but it's a coincidence. Um, and in this instance of a fallacy, we call it overlooking coincidence. After Susan threw out the chain letter, she was in an automobile accident. Therefore, throwing out the chain letter caused her to get into an automobile accident. Have you ever received any of those chain email, uh, chain mails? They, no, they come in emails now, right? It used to be chain letters. And if you got that letter, but then you didn't pass it on, like you were cursed or something like that, and you had to pass it on to 10 people, and those 10 people had to pass it on to 10 people, or they were cursed. Um, look, bad things are going to happen, right? You're going to be involved in a car accident at some point, most likely, in your life. And before you're involved, or while you're involved in that car accident, there are going to be other random, non um, non-related things that are going to happen. Um, we can't assume that just because they happen at the same time that they are causally related. In fact, oftentimes they're just coincidence. And we have to acknowledge that they're just really odd coincidences. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, here's another example of overlooking uh, coincidence. I got cancer when I lived under high voltage line power line. Therefore, the high voltage power line caused my cancer. Um, you may be overlooking a coincidence here. It's not clear that I'm living under a high voltage power line just because the two go together um, um, means a causal relationship. There are a number of people who don't live under power lines who get cancer too. Uh, so we can't quite go there. So another example of overlooking coincidence. Um, all right, this next one uh, is another example of overlooking coincidence. Um, chimney fires and long underwear purchases increase in frequency at the very same time. Therefore, chimney fires cause people to buy long underwear. <laughs> now, clearly, chimney fires do not cause people <laughs> to buy long underwear. And buying long underwear doesn't cause chimney fires. The two are causally unrelated. They're coincidences. They actually have a third underlying cause, which is that the weather gets cold, which means that people use their fireplace and buy long underwear. There's actually an underlying third cause, third thing that is the cause of both, so you have to be careful about that. Um, and then the, one of the final ones here is overlooking a common cause. Let's look at this one. I left the lights on when I went to bed. Next morning I woke up with a headache. Therefore, sleeping with the lights on causes headaches. Now, they are noticing that two things happen. They left the lights on, they woke up with a headache. And it's not totally unreasonable to think that sleeping with the lights on can cause a headache. If there are bright lights on in my house when I'm trying to sleep, I, I, I don't sleep very well. I don't have a very restful night's sleep. And ultimately, uh, if I don't have a restful night's sleep, I will wake up with a pretty bad headache. That's not uncommon for me. Um, but here's the problem is, again, and I was mentioning this in the other one, overlooking a common cause, that there could be an underlying third cause here. And that could be that just being super tired the night before caused both your headache and failure to turn the lights off. You were so tired you didn't turn the lights off and you slept so hard you woke up with a headache. That has happened as well. It's possible that there is a uh, third third thing here that underlines both, and those are both instances of the with that, therefore, because of that fallacy. 
Okay, uh, last one is going to be the argument by anecdote. We've we've covered this a bit before, so this should be sort of uh, review for you. Uh, an argument by anecdote is the fallacy of trying to support a cause and effect claim by telling a story. Um, in generalization, you can um, have a fallacy from anecdote. You can also have a fallacy um, from anecdote in, in causal stories. Um, when you try to prove or disprove a cause and effect claim by telling a story, you're, you're, uh, you know, which is a sample of one here again, you've got an argument by anecdote or an argument from anecdote. So here's an example. I've heard doctors say that eating red meat increases your risk of heart disease. Don't believe it. My uncle lived to be 100 and he ate red meat three times a day. He didn't die of a heart attack. Um, I don't know if red meat causes heart attacks or not. I, I'm not going to say that. But the fact that um, that causal claim is out there, that's not refuted by the fact that your grandpa or your uncle um, ate red meat three times a day and lived to be just fine. There will always be outliers. There will always be counterexamples to every sort of um, claim like that. Okay, uh, so we have to be very careful about this. Um, but we don't defeat the cause and effect claim just by telling a story. Okay. Um, and generally, again, here's why. The story is a sample of one. It doesn't give us a whole lot of information. Okay, that's it for this lesson. There we go.